Um, so Aaron Rodgers, where's he going to end up? So where this differs from um, the Russell Wilson thing is that I think it's a lot more difficult to piece back together. Like Russ comes up, here's my public distress flare, and Seattle answers, why here's our public answer that we've heard you. We trade for an offensive lineman and extend him and everything's good. Rodgers is like, no, you burned this bridge a year ago when you drafted my replacement. And was it, I think Albert Breer on Rich Eisen's show made the point that we made last week, which is like, just give the guy a heads up. Like the Vikings drafted a quarterback in the third round and let Kirk Cousins know before that it might happen, right? A guy that wasn't, is not supposed to be threatening him in any way, shape or form. Just, hey, Kirk, heads up. We might take a quarterback this weekend. The Packers, like, not only did they not draft him a first-round wide receiver, which is what everybody thought they were going to do, but they actually drafted his replacement and traded up to make it happen and didn't tell him about it. Like, just, just this basic lack of communication consistently breaks my brain in the NFL. You are doing this to a guy who, let's face it, has a history of being fairly sensitive when it comes to this kind of stuff, right? Got to manage the room. You For the love the of God, yeah. just tell him it's going to happen. Don't it, like even if you don't do it, there's no harm in saying, "Hey, Aaron, just so you don't get blindsided by this, we are looking at quarterbacks, and we really like this kid. If he's available, we might take him. Right? You're still our quarterback. You're still our guy. We love you. We're trying to win a but championship Justin together. Jefferson's our top option. But heads up, right? They didn't do that. They drafted his replacement, and it's like, all right, well, you're out of here next year. So Rogers goes on the Aaron Rodgers revenge tour that we joked about, lights the league on fire, becomes MVP. And then Green Bay's like, oh, wow, this changes everything. Well, no, Aaron Rodgers is our guy for the next few years. And Rodgers is like, uh, no, like you made this call. You burned this bridge. Honestly, I don't think they changed it. I, uh, they 100% did. I don't think they did. They absolutely did. They went from... He was already going to be difficult to trade before 2022. They already knew they had two years of Aaron Rodgers and two years of Jordan Love sitting, minimum. This year... They knew that was going to happen. This year, they would have been looking to transition towards no, Jordan Love. Absolutely. Whether it, during the season. They would have been looking for reasons to make that switch, and then Rodgers would be gone next year. Now they have been trying to say, I mean, they wouldn't be fighting this hard for Rodgers to stay if they thought they were going to have one more year of him. They were moving to Jordan Love anyway. They, they would be booting him out of the because building. They don't want the dead money, and they know that he's still good. Yes, they knew that he was still going to be but good. But the dead money is not that much of a killer for them now because they've already accounted for everybody, right? Like, there are, that hit is already on the roster, essentially. They're already budgeted for Aaron Rodgers. It's not like it's new money that if he disappears, they suddenly have to come up with another $30 million to squeeze under a cap. Like, they're, they're already there. So all it does is accelerate the hit and change the, the fact that, okay, instead of paying him that amount of money to play for you, you're paying him that amount of money to play for somebody else. But the point is, if they, if they hadn't changed their timeline of when they wanted Rodgers to leave, they wouldn't be fighting so hard to keep him right now sending multiple envoys consistently all the way through the season making all these noises they'd just be like well this isn't how we wanted it to go down but okay here it is and they'd be trading them already that's not the way like they this 100 percent changed their timeline of when they wanted to boot rogers out of the door and rogers is just saying i think they knew. well it, it didn't change my timeline two years I think i'm not having any of it what changed their timeline was he was going to be their starter for 2021 and then they were going to look to move on and now it's changed it by a year yeah but you're, you're trying to say that you think Rodgers is there for three more years based off his performance last year. And they're still going. I, they to want year. to extend him. They've offered him a new contract. They, I think last year completely changed Green Bay's plan in terms of this was a quarterback we were getting concerned about whether he could still get it done at this level anymore. And we've drafted his replacement. And if the decline continues. And he, he completely proved them wrong. And they said, yes, we're, all, we're all in now. 100%. We move from Rodgers to Love and everything's good. Rodgers comes out and has the best season of his career. Plays at an MVP level. Shows that he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Patrick Mahomes over a season. And shows no signs of like declining. Now it's like, oh, well, that changes everything. Now we want that guy. Like That's the guy that we had years ago who took us to the Super Bowl. That, that's the guy we've been looking for for the last few years. So if he's still there... Okay, that changes everything. That's a complete reversal of what we planned going down. But it, it isn't to Rodgers because to Rodgers, you, you set fire to the bridge a year ago by drafting his replacement, and he's not going to allow you to simply reconstruct it because he had a season that you didn't see coming. He's not going back, huh? No. Not unless they fire, like, several people in the front office. And unlike other teams... I don't even know if they have the like 
organizational flexibility to do that as, as Green Bay with this, you know, fan ownership structure and the board of people that need to make decisions. Like if this was, I don't know, who's a trigger happy owner that could just walk in there and fire half the front office? Pick one. Jerry Jones? Yeah, but he's GM as well, so it would be tough to fire himself. Is Shad reason. Khan? Okay. Shad Khan could walk in there tomorrow if, you know, Trevor Lawrence is like, I'm not playing unless these three front office guys are not in this building. Shad Khan could walk in tomorrow, fire those guys, give them a pink slip and say, done. Or Tony Khan. Tony could go in too. Right. Now, report, please. Tony could book them in wrestling matches too. Absolutely. But the point is, that kind of ownership could walk in there, hand three guys their pink slips, and the whole thing's done in, in a morning, in a morning meeting around the boardroom solve the problem right green bay can't do that they need to like convene this leadership council and like and half the people are on it like that's just they can't do that so if rogers if the thing that is going to get rogers back is dumping half the front office that he doesn't like it's not happening so where's he gonna go we already did a pff nfl daily on this we got into our predictions and everything but denver las vegas and San Francisco were his targets. San Francisco's got to be out at this yeah. point because of Trey Lance. I mean, I think Denver is the most obvious one here, right? Yes. I mean, Denver I, I, Denver have to be the team trying to make this happen. And they're also the team that we've been saying their draft doesn't make that much sense if they don't get an Aaron Rodgers in terms of they have no answer at quarterback. Their quarterbacks right now are Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater, who are both not good. So what is your plan if you're not bringing in an Aaron Rodgers, you can't possibly. I mean, look, Josh Allen did it, so it's possible. This idea of a year three jump where you go from not really a viable quarterback or a guy that's certainly underperforming to one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Now, does Drew Locke even beat out Teddy Bridgewater for the starting job? I mean, in terms of like, play if it's an open competition you're honestly giving it to the better performer in camp probably not in terms of the like is there any benefit to starting teddy bridgewater probably you know what i mean like if it's an honest competition teddy bridgewater probably outplays him if it's a which one of these guys is there any purpose to starting like there's no point in starting teddy drew drew lock at least has that potential that he can take a step forward the critical difference one of the critical differences between lock and and Josh Allen, is that Allen was at least like a rushing threat who had a ton of production on the ground and could score touchdowns that way and was at least like keeping his head above water while he worked out how to be an elite passer. Drew Locke doesn't bring that. So Drew Locke right now is just dragging everybody down the passing game and offers nothing in the run game to like the, the boy it up. The similarities though, look, nobody has Josh Allen's arm. Um, Malik Holmes. Willis in college at Liberty might. He might be the closest thing to Josh Allen's arm that we've seen. Nobody has Josh Allen's legitimate velocity and all that stuff, right? Um, so Locke doesn't have that, but he's got a good arm. Mm -hmm. He can make those big-time throws, but like Allen was missing. Has a lot of those. Missing too many throws. Yeah, he's high big-time throws, but all, it, but the, Allen's always had more plays like, ah, you're one of the few guys that could do this, right? I mean, Drew Locke doesn't have those types of plays. He does have a high percentage of big-time throws, too many turnover-worthy plays, too many just straight-up misses. So that would be the concern. Josh Allen I still look at as the anomaly. And I also look at and get Bills fans on the bad side again. We still need to see more from Josh Allen, you know, to know that is he is he there? Is he at this level? Remember last year at this time, we thought Lamar Jackson is just, all right, 90 plus quarterback every year. He's an MVP candidate. That's what he is. And he he tapered off, right? He came back down to earth last year. So um, we might, we could see some of that from Josh Allen. Either way, if Drew Locke has the ability to take a step forward, but man, I think I think everybody's rooting for Rodgers to Denver here. If in le other than Packers fans, Packers fans, Chiefs fans, Chargers fans. There's five fan bases. That's it. Four fan bases. The three in the AFC West that aren't the Broncos plus the Packers.